Watch you guys got another video on how to install Windows 11 on any unsupported PC using your command prompt. So first off, head over to Microsoft's website and download the media creation tool. And once you've got this downloaded, we're going to create our bootable media using Windows uh, media creation tool. Now, I know before everyone starts jumping in the comments section, I already know you can use Rufus. I already know there's other methods to doing this. We are a tutorial channel which show people how to do stuff. And this is just another way of doing just that. So let's go ahead and create our bootable USB flash drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to boot up to this USB flash drive. And I'll show you how to do it inside command prompt once we boot to this USB flash drive. So I'll speed this process up and let the creation tool do its thing. And it's going to create our bootable media. And again, this is just one way of doing things. It's probably not the most efficient and easy way of doing it because you obviously have to do this in command prompt. There's much more easier ways of doing it. But this is an education channel teaching you how to do stuff. So once we've booted to our USB flash drive, you'll see something looking like this at the Windows 11 setup. What you need to do here is press Shift F10 at this stage. This is going to open up our command prompt box right here because we're not going to be installing this the traditional way because if you're on unsupported hardware, it's going to block that if you have a, basically a computer that's not supported for Windows 11. So let's type disk part, all one word like you can see here, and then we're going to type list space disk and then push enter and you will see your hard drive and also your USB flash drive listed here. I'm on a virtual machine booting from a ISO file, so that's not going to show up. So basically that's what you'll see right here. So once you see your drives, we're going to need to select that drive. So let's select disk zero. This is my Windows drive. Yours will be whatever uh, disk is. It's normally disk zero. So let's select disk zero right here. We've now selected that disk. So let's go ahead and do our next command, which is list our partition. So let's go ahead and type out list partition, press enter. And these are our partitions right here. And you can see there is the system, the reserve, the primary and the recovery. These all need to be deleted. So let's go ahead and delete all these because we're installing Windows afresh. So let's select the first one, which is select partition one. And you can see it listed right there. It's called system. And we're going to select that. And now we're going to delete it. So what we need to do here is type this next command, which is called delete partition override. That's what you need to type out right here. So type this out just like so and press enter. And we can check that by typing again, uh, list partition again. So you can use your up arrow keys on your keyboard to select the previous command that you've done. And now you can see that partition one has been successfully deleted. So let's go through and delete all of the rest of these partitions. So I'm going to go ahead and select partition two. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again and do the same command that we did before. So just repeat the process here. Delete partition override and it's going to delete partition two. And you can list partition again and you can see that one's now gone. Got two more to go, partition free. So select partition free. And once the partition has been selected, we can then use the same command we used before, which is called delete partition override. And we can use that up arrow keys to go back to the previous commands that we've used rather than typing them out. So we've got one more left. So let's go list partition. And we have the partition four, which is our recovery partition. And again, you can use the clean command as well, but we're just going to go ahead and use these right here because uh, simplicity. So let's select partition four here. And once that's selected, we can go ahead and do our delete partition override and now push enter. And now all of the partitions should be deleted. So let's go ahead and type list partition. And it says there are no partitions on this disk to show because we've deleted them all. So let's create a partition EFI and make it a size of 500. So let's go ahead and type that out. Create partition EFI size equals 500 right here. That's more than enough space for that. So let's press enter and that's now done. We will need to format that drive so we can list our partition and you can see there's a little tiny star next to it. 
that means that drive has already been selected and it's partition one system, 500 megabytes in size. So let's go ahead and format it. So we will need to format this in FAT32. Now you can select partition one. It is already selected because we can see that little star there. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do this just in case for whatever strange reason your drive has not been selected. So select partition one, which is the one we've just created. Next, we're going to go ahead and format it. So let's do format space FS equals FAT32 and then space quick. That's going to do a quick format and make it FAT32. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and type that out and press enter. And you can see that has now been done successfully. We can now move on to the next stage, which is giving it a letter. So we're going to assign a letter A or whatever letter you want to free up. Make sure it's not the C because we're going to be using the C drive for Windows. But letter A is fine. So let's go ahead and give it letter A. Press enter. And that's now done. And now we've got our drive letter assigned to our actual partition that we've just created, which was partition one, and it's 500 megabytes in size. Now to install Windows, we're going to need a primary partition. So let's go ahead and create a primary partition. So type create partition primary, just like you can see on the screen. And once you've done that, that will create a primary partition for us. It would help if I spelt that right. There we go. Press enter. And we've now created a primary partition. So what we're going to do here is quickly format that for ourselves. So do format quick. So we're going to go ahead and type that out. We don't need to make this FAT32 because obviously it's going to be our Windows drive. So list partition here. You should see it listed as partition two. And again, it's 100 gigabytes. Yours will be whatever size your drive is. And you can see that little star right next to it. That means it's already selected that particular partition. So we don't need to select it. We can just go ahead and type out format and then space quick. And this will format that partition too. That's now done. And we've now successfully uh, formatted our primary partition. So next up, we're going to give it a letter. So let's assign a letter C to that drive. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Assign letter C. And that is now going to be where our Windows is going to be installed. So let's go on to the next step, which is listing our volume. So let's go ahead and type list volume right here. Press enter. And you can now see we have all of our volumes listed here. We have our A drive, which is volume two. And that is for the FAT32 partition 500 megabytes. We have volume one, which is our C drive NTFS partition, 100 gigabytes for our Windows installation. And the D drive, which is our ISO file, but yours will be your USB flash drive there because you're using a USB flash drive, not a ISO file because I'm in a virtual environment just to show you. So we will be using our D drive as our USB flash drive. So we've done with disk part here. So now we can type exit and this will leave our disk part right here. You can see it's leaving and it's put us back into the X drive location. So now we need to change directory to our USB flash drive. So it's D colon for me. Yours will be whatever your USB flash drive is. So I'm going to type D colon and we're now inside our USB flash drive. So we're going to type DIR and you can now see all of the Windows files that we're going to use to install. First, we need to change our directory to our sources directory. So type CD space sources and this will put us into our sources directory right here. Now you can uh, have a look at the file types inside here, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to type out this command right here. It's either one of these two commands. So you're basically going to type out DISM space forward slash get dash image info and then space forward slash image file colon and the drive letter of your USB flash drive and then colon backslash sources backslash install dot ESD or it will be install dot WIM. Either one of those two. And now you can check before you type this out, but a simple way of doing it is just type the command out and type ESD on the end, like I'm doing right here. Push enter. If that doesn't work, use your arrow keys to go up and press install.wim if you don't want to type out the DIR command to check 
which I should have done, but I've never did. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and type ESD and you can see it's give me an error. And the reason why it's give me an error is because it's not ESD, it's .wim. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys to go back and bring the command back up. And now you should see the index files here. So these are the index files that we're going to be using. We're going to be using index 6, which is for Windows 11 Pro. But yours might be different and you might want to install a different one. So let's go ahead and choose index colon 6, which is for our index that we want to use for Windows 11 Pro. So from here, what we're going to do is type out this next big command to install the image of Windows uh, 11 Pro onto our drive. So let's go ahead and type that out right here. And that command will be the one you see on the top of the screen. So it's either going to be install.esd or install.wim. I've put the both commands up there and you will need to change the drive letter to the drive letter of your USB flash drive. Like I've said before, mine is D. Yours will be whatever drive letter you're using for your install. So just change the drive letter and the install.esd or install.wim, depending on what one you want, and the index number to which version of Windows you want to install. Once you've done that, we're going to obviously apply that DIR to our C drive because that's the location we're going to be installing Windows. So always use the C drive as your Windows drive. And we're going to go ahead and type that out right here. And I can already see that I have a typo here, which means I've typed out the command wrong because I have image dash file instead of image file. So I need to retype that out one more time here and make sure I type it out correctly. And this is pretty common because this is what makes the command prompt so difficult. One little typo and it will just give you an error or sometimes it just won't work. And that's why it's so difficult. All I did there was put a dash in instead of having no dash. Once I push enter, this will now work properly because I've taken out the dash file. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you can see it's starting to deploy the imaging service. So let's go ahead and let that do its thing. It will see the apply in the image along the bottom. I'll speed this up. And that's now copying over to our C drive. And of course, this won't boot because we don't have a boot file installed. So let's go ahead and do that by typing bcd boot space c colon backslash windows space forward slash s and then space forward slash a colon and then space forward slash f and then space all. And this is going to install it into the A drive. I can already see there's a typo there. So let me go back. I've used the wrong Instead of colon there, I've put a different one. So let me go ahead and change that and press enter. Once that's done, it's going to copy the boot file over to our A drive, which we created earlier. And now we can exit out. And we can now close off this because we don't need to, because it's already copied all the files it needs to install Windows over to our drive. So let's close out our installation. We can shut down and pull out the USB flash drive. So shut down the PC and then reboot the PC up without the USB flash drive in. So you should have no flash drive in here now. It's going to boot to our C drive on our Windows drive. And you can see it's going to start up here. I'll speed this up a little bit to get to the next stage. And you should see something looking like this. It's going to get a few things ready. I'll show sure speed this process up for you and it will get to the next stage. Now you should see just a minute and there we go. It's now at the keyboard selection stage here. You're going to need to type shift F10 again because we need to go into OOBE and that is going for the out of box experience. Otherwise, it's going to want you to create a Microsoft account. You can see here it wants you to install the network driver and that's because I have the Ethernet cable pulled out of the system. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is press shift f10 to bring up the command prompt box because we're going to go into the out of box experience so let me go ahead and press shift f10 here and what we need to do is type oobe and that's for the out of box experience backslash and then we're going to need to do bypass nro so let's go ahead and do that right here and this will then press enter and it will restart the pc Leave the Ethernet cable out of the computer at this stage because you don't want that plugged in because otherwise it won't work. 
And once we get to this stage, it will get to the Windows logo screen and then you'll get back to the keyboard stage. Select your keyboard layout and from here, click skip. And you will now see at the bottom, I don't have internet. So let's click on that, accept their terms. And this will go on to the next stage where it's asking you to put in a username. So let's go ahead and give it a username. Click next, put a password in if you want one, click next. And now you get to choose all of your answers. So I'm going to say no for all of this stuff, required only, no and no. Same thing as usual when you're installing Windows. That's now going to get a few things ready for us and prepare the final install. And you can see we're now at the desktop. I just need to reconnect the Ethernet cable. And you've just installed Windows 11 via the command prompt. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. Now, of course, it's not for the faint hearted. You do need to know what you're doing. And again, that is pretty much the hard way of installing Windows 11. Uh, but that would have been a pretty normal process back in the day. But that's basically how you can bypass uh, the Windows 11 system requirements using the command prompt. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.